Using Google Sheets for basic web scraping? Let's see how that works in this detailed yet clear tutorial. Hi, I'm Lisa, and as you might have already realized, today I'll be covering the topic of Google Sheets web scraping. We'll talk about the main reason for using this technique, cover situations when it's suitable, and present an example of scraping website data with Google Sheets. Google Sheets web scraping can be a very effective technique. While most ways of web scraping require you to write code, web scraping with Google Sheets requires no coding or add-ons. All you need to do is use a built-in function of Google Sheets. Thus, it acts as a basic web scraper. Google Sheets is a great tool for those who want to begin web scraping without writing any code. This way, you'll be collecting the data in a spreadsheet, which is another advantage. However, note that Google Sheets has limited capabilities, and you would need to use or create a web scraper script for any advanced data gathering operations. And now, we're ready to move on to the tutorial part. Import XML is a function that imports data from various structured pages, including HTML. It accepts two parameters, the URL and the XPath query. You can create an XPath query directly from the browser. Open the web page in your preferred browser, right-click the element you want to extract, and select Inspect. You'll see the developer tools open with the HTML element highlighted. Right-click the HTML of the highlighted element, then select Copy and choose Copy XPath. This action copies the XPath and saves that element to your clipboard. Let's look at one more example. We can extract the first quote from the web page by using a more complex XPath. As you can see, XPath queries can become pretty complex. In order to remedy that, we suggest putting URLs and their related queries into cells and refer to those cells in our function arguments. Now let's take a look at a short overview of how import XML and XPath work. Press Ctrl F or Command F in the Chrome Developer toolbar you've opened earlier. Any XPath you write will be highlighted by Chrome in the HTML code. By analyzing the code, you can specify the absolute location of an element, in our case, an anchor tag. This is extremely inconvenient, though, as the structure of the HTML page constantly changes. Instead of an absolute path to the element, you can just select all anchor tags, no matter their location. Let's use the built-in Chrome function CodeX to see whether our query works as expected. As you can see, it selects all the links, but by specifying an index in the square brackets, you can narrow it down to only the first link. Next, let's extract the text of the link by using the text function. We can also extract attributes and even select HTML elements based on the values of those attributes. Now that we've learned some XPath, it's time to use it in Google Sheets. We will be scraping a website that contains books and their prices. Start by opening the website and finding out where the book titles are stored using Chrome DevTools. We can clearly see that the title of the book is stored inside of an attribute that belongs to an anchor tag. The anchor tag itself resides within an H3 heading tag. Navigate to Google Sheets and create a new sheet. Enter the URL of the web page and the XPath in two cells. Entering these values in the cells enables us to create a formula that's easy to maintain. Now type in the function import XML inside of a new cell and pass the URL and XPath to it as an argument. Press Enter to execute this function. In a moment, you'll get all the 20 book titles. You can also extract the prices by passing the same URL and a different XPath query to the same function. Mm -hmm. 
apart from import XML, a few other functions can be used for web scraping directly from the Google Sheets document. Again, there is no need for add-ons, as these are natively available. These functions are as follows. Import HTML, import feed, import data. You can use the import HTML function to extract data from tables and lists. Import data function can scrape data when your target website URL contains data in a CSV or TSV format. Import feed function can import RSS or ATEM feeds. If your target page contains data in a table, the import HTML function is perfect for you. Let's use this function to scrape a list of highest grossing films from Wikipedia. Start by creating a cell for the URL as usual. Then invoke the import HTML function. Specify the cell that refers to the URL, a string table as the second argument, and an index. We can even extract a specific column from the table we fetched by using the index function, which accepts a URL, row number, and column number. Since we want to extract all rows, we skip the row number in the function arguments and only specify the column we wish to parse. RSS and ATOM are two standard XML formats to generate website feeds. Even though scraping data from them using the import XML function is possible, that would still require writing the expat queries. Thus, a specialized function is more suitable. There are a few third-party add-ons, but we don't need any of them. This is where the import feed function comes in. It only needs one argument, which is the URL of the feed. This function will fetch the feed data and present it to you in Google Sheets. Let's take the example of the New York Times technology feeds to use this function in action. Let's update our function to include the headers by specifying true as the third parameter and also limit the number of items we fetch. You can also extract specific information about the feed using the query parameter. You can even narrow it down to a title, a description, or a URL. You might see an NA in your cell. This means that the information you fetched is empty. When you are ready to fetch actual data from the feed, use items in your query. If you have a website URL that contains a CSV file, you can use the import data function to get the data. Let's fetch census CSV from the census.gov website and display it in Google Sheets. To answer the question of whether the data stays fresh, if you keep your Google Sheets open, these functions check for updated data every hour. Data will also be refreshed if you delete and add the same cell. However, data will not be refreshed if you refresh your sheet or if you copy-paste a cell with these functions. The key advantages of using import functions in Google Sheets are you don't need to learn coding, data stays reasonably fresh automatically, you can use somewhat dynamic imports, as these formulas can be used as regular Google Sheets formulas, which means this can reference other cells. There are plenty of drawbacks as well. This method is not scalable, there is no option to customize the headers, no option to send a post request, and it's not possible to use a proxy. For anything advanced, you would have to rely on either programming or professional solutions. For the last part, I will cover a few errors that you can get while scraping using Google Sheets. Error, every result was not expanded. Means you are accidentally attempting to overwrite data in existing cells. Error, result too large. When using import XML, narrow the query down more to avoid too many results. Error, this function is not allowed to reference a cell with now, etc. It means that you are trying to reference one of the volatile functions, such as now, rand, or rand between, in one of the parameters. These references may be indirect or direct. The import functions can't use most of the volatile functions. The solution is to copy and paste values and then reference the values. And that's it for today. 
In this tutorial, I demonstrated how to scrape website data using Google Sheets. For your convenience, we also have this tutorial covered in our blog as well as GitHub repository. You can find the relevant links in the video description below. If you have any questions about this or any other re topic related to web scraping, feel free to leave a comment below or contact us at hello at oxylabs.io. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for your time and see you soon.